uh, I, I guess we're uh, we're going to uh, need to move on to um, our last speaker before our, our lunch break. Um, so uh, Laura, Laura Evers is here somewhere. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. At, at finding people on the screen. I, I don't know if Laura is. Ah. So um, I just had a message from the members asking for, to, for the link, and I just sent the link. And Laura um, did send me her presentation. She said, in case of disaster on Saturday. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering if I, hopefully she will appear. Um, no, no, I mean, Laura, Laura had, is partially sighted. So. I uh, was concerned about today, but, but if I, um, I'm just wondering if I could, uh, so uh, I'm just wondering, Julia, if I haven't seen this before in, the, in, in detail like this, um, but unless until Laura appears, I think she's wanting me to go through it. So yes, I was just I was just wondering, Dale, if that's a way of um, of doing it. To so, if you could look out to see if she appears, and uh, I will, yeah, uh, she's just saying that the, the link hasn't arrived, but I. Um, But I have sent it to her email address twice. So I think I'm just going to have to go through. So uh, Laura's, um, uh, Laura, Laura is, is um, from Oxford University and is in private practice. And her, her presentations on being seen, the lived experience of psychodynamic practitioners disclosing or not disclosing sight impairment. Um, her, the, she takes Merleau Ponty's The Meaning of Seeing. We see the things themselves. The world is what we see. But what is strange about this faith is that if we seek to articulate it into, um, in, into thesis or statements, if we ask ourselves, what is this? We, what we seeing is, and what thing and world is, we enter into a labyrinth of difficulties and contradictions. Don't know if people understood that. Wow. <laughs> see themselves, the world is what we see. But what is strange about this faith, this faith, is that we seek to articulate it into theses or statements. Okay, we put it into, put it into words, I suppose, yeah? If we ask ourselves, what is this we what seeing is? <laughs> we what seeing is, and the thing that the world is, we enter into a, a labyrinth of difficulties and contradictions. I wonder if that might just go with the idea, his idea that the seer, the seer doesn't, uh, the seeing, the seer doesn't know that they're seeing. It, 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 it's, and as soon as you become aware that you're seeing, it gets in the way of you seeing, <laughs> something like that. I'm reminded. I think that's my question for the last presentation, really, you see, is, is that whether, so, uh, whether you, 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 when you're in therapy, it's different, yeah? And so if you're doing a research approach like orthoethnography, yeah, um, then there's an argument for only doing it after you've done the, finished the therapy, yeah? Because once you do it, you come out of it and into it, and it's not necessarily helpful. But I mean, that's a kind of question, really, with regard to what's meant by the by the therapist researcher, um, but that might be also here with what you're saying, Julia, about seeing. So she's saying that Jacob's seeing and being seen in the experience of the client and the therapist uh, considers non-verbal communication in the context of seeing and being seen. And uh, he notes that visually impaired therapists or clients may have different experiences from those described below, which would be of great interest to sighted therapists. So it's something about the difference uh, uh, for, for people who are visually impaired. So uh, 
disabled by society, this is from Shakespeare, uh, some of it, within psychotherapy literature, the quiet voice of therapists with impairments may reflect a broader phenomenon conceptualized by Shakespeare as invasion. It is not only physical limitations that restrict us to our homes and those whom we know, it is the knowledge that each entry into the public world will be dominated by stares, by condescension, by pity, and by hostility. Sense of self is able. So um, Laura's research seeks the assistance of visually impaired practitioners in thinking about the nature of seeing and being seen. Its purpose is to add to the literature on managing disclosure of therapist impairment in the counseling room. The hope is that something can be added to the debate on disclosure and impairment and that it might have wider implications for considering therapist illness, aging, and other challenges to therapist perceptions of themselves as able. So it's, it's questioning um, our challenges of ourselves if we think we're able. A method of research did 60 minute semi-structured qualitative interviews conducted with psychodynamic psychotherapists. Participants self to self-identifies um, as having, sorry, is that SI? What is that? What I is think, it? I don't know. Uh, sight impairment. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very much. Sorry, no. Sight impairment. Thank you. <laughs> Each participant had an individual experience of sight loss and of working with sight impairment. The physical eye conditions were described as lattice dystrophy and Horner's syndrome, glaucoma, Sijin syndrome, ret 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 retino retinopathy, retinopathy <laughs> prematurity, retinitis pigmentosa, retinopathy with glaucoma, and total blindness, cause not specified. So IPA, interpretive, interpretive phenomenological analysis, was chosen as disability and impairment are phenomena that are often generalized and individual experiences lost. So her research results, she's got this diagram, uh, tenacious endeavor leads to these three aspects of navigating complexity in the minefield of, uh, somebody's gonna to have to tell me what TSD is. Therapist self-disclosure. Thank you. Uh, standing firm under fire and the journey from loss to acceptance. With, with regard to navigating complexity in the minefield of therapist self-disclosure, that's subdivided into juggling theory and practice, and incisive decision-making in the moment. With regard to standing firm under fire, it's daring to be seen by others and holding the client's needs to be seen. Finally, with regard to the journey from loss to acceptance, it's enduring loss and change and finding refuge and relief for the two subdivisions. So the implications for practice and theory is that the self is equal to being unapologetic for impairment and embracing adaption to the changing self for important processes. She just one sees Watermeyer 2012, who highlights the benefit of consciously working through unconsciously internalized oppression. With regard to the implications uh, for practice uh, and theory, the process equals disavow can disable the process and is at varying degrees of conscious recognition an issue with which therapists must engage. Disavow is a defense that needs special consideration on the part of the therapists with um, sight impairment. Therapists with sight impairment endeavor to unearth the areas that could disable the therapeutic process and engage with the desire to deny difficulty and avoid the issue raised by absent or limited sight. Further implications for practice and theory, disclosure decisions need to be weighed against therapeutic goals and the unique needs of each client. The therapist training with practice will determine how and when therapist self-disclosure of sight impairment are made. And while they are always made with the client's best interests at heart, the therapist's view on uh, beneficence will depend in part of their theoretical stance. 
So the recommendations that Laura, Laura suggests from her research is that for supervisors, engage, should engage proactively with disability with supervisees in the cell. And for the training organizations, educators, include awareness and training on issues of impairment and disability in the syllabus. The workplace leaders proactive, proactively investigate the needs of those with disability in terms of access to work, putting policy into practice. And for therapists, educate yourself, proactively engage with access needs and issues related to disability with co-workers and clients. Risk of getting it <laughs> wrong. Um, so that, that's uh, Laura's presentation. Um, I don't know what people's comments are. Certainly, Laura um, suggested that I asked at the start if anyone had any impairments we could adjust for. And she was keen, for example, that I would read if she was presenting any, any comments in the comments box uh, to her. Um, I know she had a very busy day and could only fit this in. But I think there's also. Um, well, I'm, struck, I'm struck by the idea that uh, the person who was supposed to be giving this talk wasn't able to, as it were, access the conference. Um, and give right. it, Yeah, <laughs> don't know what's going on there. Um, right. You did a good job, though, Del, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, what do people's thoughts on? I, I was thinking of the first slide, was it with Merlo Pompey? Yes. Yeah. You know the thing about faith? Yeah. It's almost like he's saying our perception or our experiences have a kind of element of faith involved, you know, that what I see is true, you know, or true to something, you know. Um, Seeing is believing. Yeah, something like that. Um, as you were talking, I was thinking of looking at my cat, yeah, and how does my cat see me, you know? Um, it's almost like an alien experience. I, I, and if I if I try to understand how I think some other creature is seen by me or sees me, there's a certain act of faith involved. Um, and that, that, that might have something to do with being seen, you know, like the therapist being seen and the client being seen as well. Yeah. I mean, I suppose I'm saying really is, are we always, a, are we always impaired in some way in how we see, you know, in, in, in a metaphorical manner as well? Like if I take off my glasses, I, I can't see that at all, but if I put them on, I can. But is the same not happening with clients in a way, you know, depending on how we are, you know? Or is it just always there? Yes. I don't know if it relates or not, Tony, to the kind of... Um, yeah, maybe it doesn't. ...to, yeah. uh, to um, uh, the previous presenter on this start, you know, with regard to figure ground, you know? Uh, yeah. I, I saw a client once who, for a long time, and she said there was a photograph, a big photograph of the family in the living room, but she wasn't in it. <laughs> Towards the end of the film, she, she looked again. She was in the photograph. <laughs> right. I don't know. Um, yeah. yeah. We, we we think what we see of the world is 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 is, 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 is what is to be seen of the world, rather than what's the way we see the world. Yeah. I think. I mean. I think. I think all. I mean. I think all of that. Those things that you're raising are really quite important, you know, and and, and very difficult, but. I suppose I'm looking at looking at this quote and I'm thinking, but one of the things that, that, that they seem to be up to, he seems to be up to, is to say that there's a difference between uh, looking at something and, and seeing it. And then you move to this thing about what, it, what is we? Mm -hmm. The we who sees and what, what is seeing? And that they're much more sort of difficult questions 
uh, you know, it's especially when you, I think you're saying something about when you try to articulate that, when you try to build a thesis about it, um, you know, it, it, they, they're just much more difficult. I guess the we, the we part is quite interesting for us, isn't it, as well? Who, who is we? What is we? And, yeah. and, and I suppose what is seen, uh, following what both of you have been saying, um, you know, what, what, it, what is it to see something? What is it to sort of, you know, is, is it to understand it? Um, I don't know, the, the, for the, the previous speaker, sorry, I've forgotten your, your, your name, I should have, is that Nicole? Um, yeah. I, I was thinking that what, what was really interesting about, uh, about what you did, I mean, there are lots of things, but one thing that struck me is that there was a, a, a comment, I tried to write it down, that academic, academic writing that's easiest to read um, is, is the hardest to write, or something like that, which I thought was great. And I think there's something about, about you see, I don't know how much it's about understanding, it's, but it's partly about what kind of position we're in with things. Because, you know, we, if we go over a subject, a thing many times, there's a way in which we, we get into a different position with it. And it might not be that we understand it fully or whatever it is, but it's different from someone who's sort of struggling, struggling along with it or struggling differently with it. And, um, and I guess I'm trying to move away from understanding and, and more into... I don't know something about how 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 we see. So if that's not very clear, well, is it also? Are you saying it's where we're coming from in some ways? Is what we're seeing. When you saw it when you were talking, it reminded me of when they first in drama showed a, a, a situation that they had a handheld camera from the different person's you know viewpoint, as it were. Yeah? Yes, yes. That, that you saw the same story, but through very different lenses, as it were. Of, of. Yeah, yeah, and the, the, and the, there wasn't a, 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 a there wasn't a, a we uh, so clearly or if at all. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's something about as soon as the lens is is directed at you, it, you're changed. You meet, you're changed. It, this is both the scene and the seer and the scene, isn't it? That they're interchangeable and it, interacting. There's there's a crossover. So, so in the in, the interaction, each is changed by being seen by the other. It's it, it's that chiasm. It's it's the the chiasm chiasma in Merleau Ponty, the crossing over of experiences and seeing and being seen by each other. That that is complicated, and 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 we're all changing minute by second by second by by being seen by others and by seeing others. But shouldn't we be also questioning the idea of seeing? And is that really what we're talking about? Because it's a very ableist assumption to say that we're seeing rather than the myriad of ways that we perceive and interact with the world. And seeing is just automatically seen as dominant. Mm -hmm. And so the way that seeing is used in psychological theories, I think really needs questioning. It's how we're relating, it's how we're perceiving, it's how we're connecting. Yes, it's, um, it's, it's, it's difficult. In Merleau Ponty, he's not really talking about seeing in the literal way. But on the other hand, that, that there's a, dominant, a dominance of sight, isn't there, as well, which is difficult. But that's what we need to question, isn't it? And the idea that that's an impairment to not have that, because, of course, our other sensory perceptions will be heightened without that and we'll perceive things in a very different way. I, I think that's particularly important, given the... Um, the, the primacy, unfortunately, given to the notion of vision, isn't it? You know, we have um, we have um, chief executives who have visions and all this kind of stuff. You know, and previously people used to be locked up for it, but the um, uh, and and the, the it's it's a total vision could be used as a totalizing mood. Yeah, you know? it's it's not possible for two people to have visions, as it were. You're incorporated in somebody's vision. Um, I think what Laura's presentation is, I think, opening up questions for us as practitioners about our own ability to um, include people who are partially sighted, but it's also through her work, raising just general questions about who, what she's experiencing through being partially sighted, opens up for us as psychotherapists with everybody. Okay, I think this is um, uh, this is very, it's very interesting, isn't it? And uh, difficult, difficult to stop. But we are due to have um, a short break now. This is just just a ten minute break. Um, 
which I think is, it's uh, sensible that we actually do have breaks. Uh, so um, we're due back at 20 past 12. Oh, no. Oh, we, have we gone over actually already? No, no, we're, we're, we're fine. No, that's right. We're fine. Yeah, we're right. we're fine. Can so I just can... interrupt? Yeah. Just to say that Laura sent a message saying that somehow the technology has let her down. She was worried about that. Um, and she has some charts and things, which I know she previously asked me if you were interested to send out to you. So I'm assuming people would like, 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 the, yep, I, I, to send, yep, I'll send around afterwards. Uh, further information she has, as well as anything else people want me to send around. Sorry, back to you, Julia. Or... Yes, so we're due back at um, 20 past 12. Um, uh, uh, having drunk all that coffee, I suspect we now need the move. So we've got a 10 minute break for that. Well, less than 10 minutes now. Yes. See, you, see you in nine. <laughs>